Hi everyone and welcome to Vintage Digital Watches. Today I'm so excited because we have royalty in the workshop and that is a very special watch was sent in for repair and I'll just have to show you what type of watch it is. Get ready. It's a national semiconductor, also known as Novus calculator watch. This is for many, like for me, a dream watch. But it has been sent in for repair by a person and I couldn't refuse not to try to repair it. So that's what we'll do today. The person that sent me the watch already told me that it has an issue with the wire bonds. So we already have a lead on what to start uh, repairing on. The watch is supposed to be partially working. So let's get over to the workbench and start fixing this. The tools that we are going to use are not that sophisticated. So this is a tweezer and I've prepared the tip to be very sharp. Uh, just so you can imagine how sharp it should be. You should be able to pick up a hair from a flat surface. Toothpicks, yes, toothpicks are going to be the way that we apply the compound to the integrated circuit and the pads on the sides. And this is because I can sharpen it as thin as I possible, possibly can. And the idea is to get it as thin as a single wood fiber. Next, we have our wire glue compound, and you can find this on eBay uh, from various sellers. Just type in wire glue or silver glue compound, and you can sit in these syringes. Uh, here we have some on a piece of paper, just so you can get an idea of what it is and its consistency. It's like dough or something, but uh, it will solidify. You can solidify it with a hair driver, hair dryer, but we're not going to do that because we are going to blow away our wire bonds. We'll just leave it to dry and that usually takes about uh, a day or two. And the final ingredient is a place from where we can get those uh, golden wire bonds and this is an old PCB that I have and you can see I have quite a bit of supply. These are the tools that you will need and of course a microscope. So what we want to do first is insert some batteries and see if the fault really is visible. Here I have a toothpick that has had its head rounded off to be gentle on the keypad. Eight, zero, eight, eight, eight. So unless this watch really is supposed to work like that, we are missing digits here and we are missing a digit right over there. And again, we can see in this mode, we are actually seeing that missing digit over there and we are seeing a couple of digits missing over here. So next step is to disassemble the watch and look if truly we have an issue with the wire bonds. And more than likely, the wire bond circuit is right underneath this protective plastic cradle. We'll proceed to removing that too. Just briefly check the contacts. They seem to be fine, no corrosion in the area of the batteries, which is always good. And there we go, 
that is the module removed. Pretty simple construction with a very simple LCD. Now I'll have to do some inspecting under the microscope because I can see that this plastic cradle is being held in with these retainers that also appear to retain the LCD in place. And I want to make sure I see exactly how the construction and how it's all put together before I try to lift up this protective cradle. There we go. You can see it's quite springy and I'm sure that its purpose was also to keep pressure on the zebra strip here to make sure that there is good contact between the LCD and the pads coming from the PCB. Here we go and we'll just we must take note of where the LCD sits. And now this should be able to come off. Yes. And there we see the two circuits. Don't worry, my tweezer is about a centimeter away from the board. So those two are the integrated circuits and there are wire bonds coming from it to the board. I'll do a close up. And there we have the board now. It's not clear to my naked eye, but I do think that somebody else has had a go uh, at fixing those wire bonds. I will definitely know more once it's under the microscope. So this is one of the two integrated circuits. And I suppose that this one is actually working and all right. If we cross over to this one, we can see the full extent of the damage. We do see here that somebody else has been here before attempting to fix, or maybe they fixed it temporarily. No wire bonds fell out. So I'm assuming that the fix wasn't complete. I have this and this traces missing their wire bonds, which I assume go to that and that place on the integrated circuit itself. If we scroll up to here, this trace is missing its wire bond that needs to go to a pad on the integrated circuit. So you can see right there in the center of the screen, some of the wires and not only the ones in the center of the screen might seem that they are overlapping or touching each other. So I went ahead and tested with a multimeter and although they might seem they are touching each other, they actually don't but they are in very close proximity. I will not try to move them because that might cause them to break away from either the pad or from the IC and I don't want to risk that. The only operation that I will do is try to add the missing ones. So here we have the spare wire bond and these are gold wires and they are as thin as 0.001 millimeters. And what we want to do is glue that over there with the wire glue and then after it's solidified, we are going to glue the other end onto the IC. And uh, the gluing on the IC is going to be the tricky part. So let's start off with adding a bit of glue there and then putting the wire bond on it. Right on the tip of the needle, we have some wire glue. Okay, that should do it. And now we will wait for it to solidify. So as you can see, I routed the wires. Well, I arranged their heads to touch the tiny, tiny spots on the IC. So we have this wire, then we have this wire. And here in the upper part, we have our last wire. And I did this using, uh, well, really really sharp toothpicks and that is to be gentle with those gold wires because they can snap up very easily. The next operation is to add some of the wire glue right on the tip 
of those three wire bonds. I wish I could have shown you the operation under a microscope where I bended the wires into shape, but I needed to use both oculars of the microscope because it's just impossible to do it with a single eye and that also needed both of my hands. So a lot of respect for those watchmakers that only use a single eyepiece. That is just amazing. Okay, so now we are going to attach that wire to the integrated circuit and you can see I've already done this one and the other one so this is all that's left and we must carefully add it to that area Okay, now it's there, but we need to press a bit on the wire just to make sure it leans against the IC. So we'll rotate it and we'll just have to gently push it aside. And there we go that's what we want to do and now we'll leave it to dry and in the end we'll test our results okay so here we are trying to test if the glue has set and I have here a piece of hair and we are trying to lift and you can see that that is safely glued in place if we cannot move it with a piece of hair so I will call that a successful I give it a, I will give it a short test multimeter to see that we don't have continuity in between the wires and we can start assembly and now with everything cleaned up it's time to reassemble the module And ta-da! We, we do have a significant improvement. Uh, you can see that we have all but two. Yeah, that uh, one digit isn't fully working. So I will continue to probe around it and see what loose contact is that or if it's just something that requires cleaning. So yeah, uh, I believe that fix works so after probing around in the watch and planning for further fixes i came to the conclusion that this is how we're going to live it as it is fixed up to this point doing further fixes would have meant me bending back into shape all of the wire bonds which would have meant more risk uh, maybe they would have broken off more fixes and it's hard enough to find one of these watches out in the wild let alone one that is working for the most part. So the fixes are up to this point and now I will forward it back to its owner. And just as a trivia, this video took two months to film because I had to certify this fix. I had to test the materials, 
uh, do the fix on a different type of watch just to certify that it is possible, they are the right materials, get familiar with what I have to do, make sure that it is indeed possible to fix such small traces and glue them to the integrated circuit. So that took a lot. And another trivia, this is how my setup looks when I'm filming under the microscope. And here is the thickness of one of those wire bonds. You can see it compared to a human hair. This is without a doubt one of the toughest fixes I had to do and definitely one of the most frustrating. As for attempting this fix on other watches in the future, I'll probably stay away from it just because of the complexity and only attempt it if there is indeed a truly truly rare watch that uh, deserves to be honored. If you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button as I try to release as often as possible digital watch related videos, reviews, many other repairs and whatnot. So I'll see you on the next video. Bye.